Mary Jane, you have Irish origin because your parents were mm -hmm. both Irish. Irish. <laughs> you were born in Boston, the United States, and then you came here as a teacher. Very young. Very, very young. young. In fact, and all you... my students are in their 60s now, my first students. And then you chose to come here in Vetralla. Well, after 35 years in Rome, uh, we needed something bigger. We wanted to be away from the big city. And after four years in Moscow. So uh, arriving here, I was not the only English language journalist. Whereas in Rome, I was one of many, many. So here I had, it was virgin territory. And so that's why I was able to d notice all of these things and then write about them because nobody had ever thought of them as important before. So that's, uh, in fact, I'll show you some of these interesting English connections and foreign connections if we go out. We'll go out to visit at the, the city hall. Okay? So, yes. And then we'll go to see another really special place that's just been restored and, and all of the things that were not visible before have come out. So another interesting connection with the history of the local history with the Farnese family. Okay, so shall we go? Yes, oh, sure. sure. these amazing English connections that we have here. Notice this huge plaque. In the center, it's Giulio II, Giulio, Papa Giulio II, Della Rovere. And on this side, the only place in the world that Henry VIII is outside of England. That's Henry VIII's coat of arms when he was a young king. This is 1512. On that side is the Cardinal who was his ambassador to the Holy See. Cardinal Christopher Bainbridge, you see where it says underneath, Cree Car Angle. Nobody knew who that was, so I had to do a lot of research, found out that this Cardinal was sent to Rome and Julius II gave him the city of Vetralla, the castle of Vetralla, where he put his enemies inside the castle. Now the castle doesn't exist anymore, it was bombed during World War II, so thank God they took this away from the castle and put it here in the governor's palace in about 1750 or so, we don't know exactly, but we know from something that's coming later. So this has always been the only um, English city, it belonged to England, it was under the protection of the crown since 1512. So this is a, a special thing, it's, none of the other towns in Tusha have this. Mary Jane, this story you are telling me is amazing. Amazing because it's a story of connections mm -hmm. among a pope, a cardinal, and a king, here in Vetralla. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay, Julia, I will now show you the second English connection. Here we are now in the 1700s, and this is Cardinal Henry Stewart, a famous cardinal, very wealthy, he was the uh, part of the, the Stuart family, and there he is within the, the actual piece, this beautiful portrait bust was brought here in 1802, and it was given to the city because he was like their man in Rome. He was the, the guy who helped them with all of their problems. And he came here because he knew about the English connections that already existed from 1512. And the bust is probably by Agostino Penna. When I first saw it, I thought it was Canova, because <laughs> Canova did so many uh, beautiful works of art for the Stuart family. You told me that you did your research in the British... Mm -hmm. In London, London, British Library. British Library in London. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long did you take to well, do I, all your research? I went three different times, because when I went the first time and I read, uh, oh, we won't speak about Pisa, because we already talked about that. So I said, oh, they came another time. So I had to go back and uh, find out all the three different vi viaggi or travels that he did. Yeah. So how long did you take to do this? And they, several life. years, several years when oh, I was free. On my own, huh? traveling, oh, yeah, staying, yeah. publishing the book, <laughs> all on my own. Yeah.
Okay, hey, Julia, now we're in this wonderful little hidden away church, the Madonna del Viscato, Our Lady of the Ransom. And there she is in the big painting that you see. But the most interesting thing is the fresco, the beautiful fresco. Uh, a few years ago, it was restored. If you see the pictures, what it was like before, it was really dark. Everything was black because of the candle smoke for centuries. And uh, when they finished the restoration, the bishop came and made the inauguration. The church was packed with people. And as soon as they all went out, I came up and I looked at the frescoes that I had never really seen before. And I noticed this heraldic of ice, heraldry doesn't lie. So if it's there, there's a reason. And discovered that's the Baglione family, Baglione. And this person who nobody really noticed before is the lady dressed with the widow's um, veil. And who could she be? Well, we've got the first clue is the Baglione coat of arms. Second clue, there's the date. So these frescoes were done just at the moment when a famous woman who's been sort of cancelled from the history of this area because she was a bit scandalous, mm -hmm. Hortensia Farnese, Hortensia Baglione Farnese, who was uh, also the, the Duchess of Vignanello, the castle of Vignanello. And she was famous because, infamous because she killed two husbands and maybe even a daughter. And so she was sort of, you know, they wanted to forget about her belonging to the family because she was an embarrassment to the Pope because she was the nephew, the niece of the Pope. And then as time went on, after the, the Pope decided he would give her penance, give her, take care of, erase all of her sins. So he, he dedicated this church to us. She was allowed to have the painting of herself next to St. Peter as a penitent with the dark veil. And also the, uh, the whole church was very important then because this was the, the main church for entering into Vetrala because it was towards Civita Vecchia. And the other painting also of the Madonna of the Ransom, she, you can see her face stuck in there with the other saints, the ladies all around her. And the Sacconi, which are these fellows with the hoods, the white hoods, they still exist. It's a, it's a fraternity that still exists at Vignanello. And they are, um, they're in the painting of 1500 and they're also still around today. So this shows you the continuity of the, of the history. I discovered the history of uh, Hortensia Farnese at Ruspoli Castello Castle in Vignanello. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing to find her here. here. Mm -hmm. With her nephew or cousin, the Cardinal Farnese too. So yeah. the whole family. This was all Farnese land. He was in charge here. Yeah, but she is a sinner. A sinner. She was a sinner, yes. Yeah, <laughs> in, uh, in a church yeah. with saints, popes, and yeah, the strange. <laughs> exactly. And of course, the Ruspoli family now has re found the picture of what their ancestor looked like. Because none of her pictures, it's sort of like Giulia Farnese. Do you remember the story of Giulia? Yeah. She was an embarrassment to the family, yeah. the Pope's family too. So all of her portraits were destroyed or hidden. And also this one was hidden away in the trala. <laughs> What do you think of our Villa Comunale, Julie? Isn't it beautiful? Yes, I think it's amazing to have this kind of park just in the middle mm -hmm. of the village, enjoying the sun. Mm -hmm. the yeah, it's really our, our green place yeah. and it's flat, so it's a great place for walking. The young couples come with the babies and you can hear behind us the boys practicing their music. And then the evening, about six o'clock or so, all of the older people come and walk and meet their friends and it's a good place to get some exercise. In the morning, you'll see the, the young people running. So this is a good place yeah. for every, every age group. Every age. Mm -hmm. And you can stay here just on the bench and join the community, mm -hmm. doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Dolce far niente. <laughs> Dolce far niente. <laughs> the sweetness of doing nothing. Yes. We need that. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Italian way of life. Yeah. And it used to belong to the famous sculptor, Pietro Canonica. This was his villa, his uh, garden. And just beyond that wall was one of his villas that he lived in. And at that end was his foundry where he prepared his statues that he'd made and then sent all over the world, from Russia to Egypt to England. He was very famous in his time, Pietro Canonica. So he loved to stay here in Vetralla too. This is another great international connection of Vetralla with the world. With the world, yeah. Exactly.